First and foremost, when you're pulling a soil sample, you need a plastic bucket. Don't use a galvanized bucket or any kind of metal bucket because the metal will transfer into your soil and skew your soil sample. So you need to have a try to have a plastic bucket. I've got a soil probe here that works very well. Uh, everybody doesn't have these, but uh, if you can get your hands on one, a lot of the local extension offices uh, will have some on hand that you can borrow, check out, or whatever. And they'll be the smaller type here, which they work just as well. You just have to bend down a little further, but they work fine. So, uh, the next thing you need to do is figure out what kind of depth that you're, you're pulling your soil sample. Here in the yard, that two inches deep, because that's kind of where the, all the action is in, in, a, in a yard in the top two or three inches of soil. In a field setting, like a garden or something like that, four to six inches is where you need to be. So we're, today we're gonna be going about that deep and, uh, and pull, pull your soil sample. And if you look around the yard, it's a pretty big yard. The front yard of this home is, is fairly even level, so you could probably take one sample off of this front yard. If it's a little too, too big for you or something changes, you've got some side slope, you may want to go pull a different sample. So anytime there's something different about a, an area, you want to pull a different sample. So what we would do out here would probably be, if we want to take two samples, we would break it up from here like from the driveway to that tree right there and go from the road back to the home and call that one sample. If you don't have access to one of these soil tubes, you can use something like a bull planter or a, a small hand trial or something like that, but you still don't want to go over to about two to three inches deep. So, and you still need to go around the yard and get a representative sample. Uh, you don't want to dig a hole and put it in the box because all you're doing is saying is finding out what's going on in that really small area. If you go around the yard and take a good representative sample, then you'll have good information to, to work with. The sample that we pull, we want to be representative of what we pull. And so we'll make, meander around and pull 20 to 25 cores. We'll have to have enough to, to make a representative sample. So. step in the process is to get your box from North Carolina Department of Agriculture and we'll fold it up in a minute and mix your soil if you got clods and peds try to break them up and mix it thoroughly so you've taken a, a, uh, a sample from your representative area and you want to make sure that the, the soil that you put in the box is thoroughly mixed so that you get a good soil get a good sample. If you get roots and bits of grass in it, just throw them out. We don't need that for the sample. But it doesn't really, it doesn't hurt to leave some in there if you don't get them all out. So it's no big problem. We'll take a few of them out. We've mixed our soil and crushed up the clods. And then here's our box. Put your name, your address, and what you want to call that sample. In this particular instance, we might call this one front, since it's the front yard. And then you fold the box up. It's pretty simple. You've got two flaps, close one, close two. You put your soil in. filling it up to right this red line. You can go over a little over it, that's fine. And then close your box up 
Like so. And that's ready to be sent in to the soils layer. In addition to the box, you have a soil sample information sheet that you need to fill out. Last name, first name, phone number, address, city, state, zip. This is very important nowadays, is to put your email on this sample sheet because we do not, set, we do not mail out sample results anymore. Uh, it's available online and our, our folks at the lab will send you an email to tell you when your samples are ready. If you've got a consultant, uh, like a regional agronomist or an extension agent that you want to also have access to this, you put their name and put their email on there. Uh, what we've taken today is a routine sample, so there's no fee, still in North Carolina. Uh, if you have a farm or whatever, uh, we'd like to, to know what county all these samples come from. So put the number of samples you've pulled, the county where it's collected, and of course, like I said, if you're not asking for anything in, in addition to a routine soil sample, there's no charge. You put your sample identification, say that one we took a while ago was called front. So you put F-R-O-N-T right here. If you have limed this area in the last year, you need to put that in the crop that you're going to grow. And say in this, in this case, it's Bermuda grass uh, lawn. And we'll look on the back. And unless you're growing centipede grass, which this is not, it has a separate uh, crop code for centipede, we're going growing lawn. So 026, you put lawn, put lawn here, and 026 in the crop code. And the second crop will be the same. Uh, if you're doing something like a vegetable garden, that kind of thing, uh, you can go right in here. It says flower garden, vegetable garden. Put that in there in the appropriate crop code, and you'll be ready to go. Our lab also does diagnostic soil samples. Um, if you have a problem area, you have an area in your yard that is not growing well, or an area in your vegetable garden, flower garden is not growing well, what we do with the diagnostic sample is we take more detailed information about what you have done and, find, and, and give more detailed information of what you can do to fix the problem that you have. Basically the information you get back from a soil sample will give you the pH of the soil and the nutrient levels that are in the soil. And we will also give you recommendations of how much and what kind of fertilizer, how much uh, lime to put on your soil to grow whatever you're trying to grow. Right. This, and I've, I've said this before many times that you can't pick up some soil here in North Carolina, smell it, taste it, feel it and get a, a, a good idea of what, what the pH is or how much fertilizer you need to add to it. This is the best way to find out that specific information. In vegetable gardens, uh, croplands, that kind of thing, we recommend a soil sample once every two years. In yards, uh, once you get everything, get your fertility right, once every three years is fine. So you don't have to you don't have to do it every year if you want to you can but it's not necessary. Recommend that homeowners uh, pull their soil samples from about April through September because from September until April our lab is slammed with farmer samples and we run somewhere in the neighborhood of 350,000 a year and the lion's share of those come in between September and, and uh, April. A couple other things to remember about when you're pulling a soil sample is to fill it up at least until that mark. We don't need any more than that, but we need at least that much. If you fill it halfway full, we may not have enough to run the sample. And if there's a mistake made or something goes on that we need to resample, there would definitely not be enough for that. Um, the folks at the soils lab will ask everybody not to tape the top of these boxes. Uh, if a little bit of the soil spills out, it's generally okay, but please do not tape the top of the boxes because it makes it because they're ripping them off when they make it get get to the soils lab, and it, it, if you tape them, it makes it a lot harder. 